Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning. Right now at 5, explaining the governor's new plan for stay-at-home orders, how the state will decide who's affected, and if we are, what does it mean for our local businesses? And Congress is inching closer to a COVID-19 relief deal, promising to get it done by the end of the year. What the president says about whether he'd sign the bill, coming up. And we're not out of the woods yet on fire danger. Just take a look at the battle firefighters in Orange County are facing with, the bonfire. An update on their progress overnight on this Friday, December 4th, 2020. Good morning, everyone, and thanks so much for starting your day with us on this Friday. I'm Alex Fisher along with Maddie Jansen. And Maddie, one thing that, of course, we've been uh, keeping a close eye out on uh, over the last couple of days is the winds and the fire danger that a lot of us face. Uh, how's it up in the mountains this morning, Kev? Well, the mountains uh, aren't looking too bad this morning. The things have calmed down. It's amazing what 24 hours will do for us. Uh, but the fire danger is still high up in the mountains because of the dew point and humidity values that are still going to be relatively low for today. So let's show you outside right now, 41 degrees on the temperature for Bakersfield. Now, yesterday we were seeing sustained winds right around 20 miles per hour right now out of the east southeast at 6. So a big difference, and we've got lower 40s. Here's a look at the hour-by-hour -hour forecast for today. Lots of sunshine expected, and we will be back into the 60s by 3 o'clock right near 66. Now for the mountains, we're cool at 25. One thing to note here, a negative dew point at negative 4, 28% on the humidity and the winds much lighter just down to the east at 5. But with the dew point and humidity value the way it is, uh, that fire danger is still high. And you can see in terms of the winds right now, the only little pocket of wind is over the grapevine. Here's a look watches and warnings. The fire weather warning still in place until 6 p.m. tonight for areas around the Kern County Mountains and that also includes areas even south of Kern County into Southern California and as Alex mentioned, battling some fires down that way. Here's a look at the Tehachapi forecast for today. We'll be back into the upper 40s by 9 a.m. near 60 throughout the afternoon and we will see a little bit of a breeze pick up right around late morning, early afternoon, but overall a much different day than what we saw yesterday. I'll have more on our weekend weather that's coming your way in just a little bit. For now, back over to you. All right, Kev, thanks so much. Your time now is 5.02, and Kern Public Health announced 418 more people were infected with coronavirus yesterday. We also learned another person has died. 129 people are being treated for the virus in our local hospitals. According to our health department, that's up 14 people since Wednesday. 452 people have died from this virus since the beginning of the pandemic back in March. And as cases rise across the state, including here in Kern, our hospitals are filling up fast. Governor Newsom warns he may soon issue stay at home orders in an effort to curb the spread to help ease the burden on our health care system. 17 Taylor Schaub joins us now to break down the order and what it means for us here in Kern County. Taylor. Well, good morning, Alex. The governor's announcement yesterday has communities bracing for the effects of another major lockdown as health officials continue to worry about the devastating impact of the second coronavirus wave on hospitals throughout California. The bottom line is if we don't act now, our hospital system will be overwhelmed. If we don't act now, we'll continue to see a death rate climb, more lives lost. The governor's order divides California into five regions, Kern County falling into the San Joaquin Valley region. In essence, if hospital ICU capacity falls below 15 percent in any region, then the order would go into effect for that region for three weeks. Bars, wineries, personal services and barbershops would have to close while schools could remain open. Restaurants could only offer Takeout or delivery service retail businesses could only open to 20 percent capacity. Operations classified as, quote, critical infrastructure would also stay open. So far, every region is above 15 percent ICU capacity, but our region is expected to fall below that threshold in just a matter of days as we sit just below 20 percent capacity right now. In the wake of the announcement, there was some skepticism regarding the potential impact on our economy, including Senator Shannon Grove, saying in a statement that the governor's response to the pandemic could not be worse than the disease itself. Health officials, however, say it's a necessary measure. With nearly four times the rate of transmission going on in our state that we had just six weeks ago, 
uh, it's time that we actually limit our movement and really get this transmission down. So that's what this is about. If the order goes into effect, businesses would have 48 hours to prepare. In studio, Taylor Shaw, 17 News. All right, Taylor, thanks so much. And that is the subject of our 17 interactive feedback poll. Today we're asking, do you think a stay-at-home order should be issued before a second stimulus? You can call or text us at 661-888-4617. Press 1 if you think yes, 2 if not. You can also text, tweet, email, or Facebook your comments to us. Once again, our interactive feedback phone line is 661-888-4617. And current public health is still stressing the importance of getting tested, even if you do not have symptoms of COVID-19. Some test sites come with a financial incentive, a $25 Visa gift card. Current public health has made 12,000 of those cards available from funding from the CARES Act. You are limited to one gift card per person per day. Here's a list of sites that offer those gift cards. Three public libraries in Kern, Lamont, Rosemond, and Wasco, plus the Arvin Public Health Building, Kern Valley Hospital and Good Samaritan Hospital. And the Kern County Latino COVID-19 Task Force is holding free testing sites this week. And to see all the testing sites, just go to kernpublichealth.com and click on the coronavirus tab. That's where you can put in your address and find testing sites near you. Today, the free testing site is happening from at 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Greenfield Family Resource Center. Walk-ins are welcome. Organizers will hand out free face masks. That's courtesy of Adventist Health and Jim Burke Ford. And then on Sunday, the Sick Women's Association is holding a free testing site. It's happening at 7000 Weibel Road from 11 a.m. till 3 p.m. No insurance is needed, and the organization is providing free masks and free PPE. For more information, just visit our website, kget.com. Now to an issue we continue to track closely here at KGET, pedestrian safety. A person was hospitalized last night after being hit by a car in South Bakersfield. It happened around 720 last night on South H Street, just north of Bell Terrace. It's unclear if the pedestrian was in a crosswalk. BPD says the person was taken to the hospital with injuries described as moderate to major. BPD says drugs and alcohol do not appear to be factors in the accident. KG &E is partnering, KGET is partnering with the Kern Economic Development Corporation for the 14th annual Kern County Energy Summit taking place this weekend right here on KGET TV 17. Viewers will hear from industry leaders and policymakers as they provide updates on emerging trends in Kern County's energy sector. Among forum members are executives from SoCal Gas and the director of the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. It's happening tomorrow from 6 to 7.30 p.m. here on KGET. Your time now is 5.08, and while kids look forward to celebrating their birthdays, some don't always get the chance. That's where a local group comes in. Team Dignity Health, part of the Dream Builders program in Bakersfield, spent last month collecting handmade birthday cards decorated by the community. Yesterday, they dropped off those cards at the Mission at Kern County, the Jamison Center, and other places so children all over the county could feel special and loved for their birthday. It's just crazy that some kids don't get to celebrate their birthdays and it's just so nice knowing that you're doing something to make someone else happy. And in these kids' lives, they don't have very many things to look forward to sometimes. Welcome back. Your time now is 5-11. Last night, hundreds of Orange County firefighters were on the front lines battling the Bond Fire, which has grown to more than 6,000 acres. Two firefighters who were hurt battling the fire are now being treated in a hospital. As winds picked up and the fire threat worsened across the region, SoCal Edison shut off power to nearly 50,000 customers. Susan Iwamoto says she ran to rescue her neighbor's horses and flames came rushing toward the home. It's so fast. We barely, barely could get out. As of this morning, the bonfire is 10% contained, but still has potential for growth due to downed power lines and wires in the area. Meantime, as we mentioned, those SoCal Edison shutoffs affected a lot of customers, including some here in Kern County. About 3,600 Kern customers lost power due to that wildfire danger. At one point, more than 5,000 customers locally were in the dark. The areas affected included Bear Valley Springs, Tehachapi, Golden Hills, Fraser Park, and Lebec. As of early this morning, power has been restored to those customers. 
And PG&E has also restored power to all customers that they had to shut power off for those PSPS. Wednesday night, 617 customers lost power, mainly in the Fort Tejon and Lebec areas as part of the public safety power shutoffs. Once the winds died down, the power lines were inspected and power restored. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. Welcome back to your 17 Business Watch. If you're looking for something new to keep yourself and the kids entertained during this weird pandemic holiday season, just check out the holiday-themed Mattel Playroom. It offers families the opportunity to create memories virtually with the holiday-themed activities from caroling karaoke to winter wonderland bingo and an ugly sweater party featuring DIY creations. These activities are perfect for virtual play dates with friends and relatives. Just log on to mattelplayroom.com in order to play. Well, coronavirus cases continues to climb as we enter the holiday season and the cold winter months. And now there's a tracking device that some institutions are implementing to prevent the spread. NBC's Liz McLaughlin tells us more about the new technology and why it's causing some controversy. A coin-sized sensor could give those with COVID-19 an early heads up. We've got to make this easy and, and almost it's effortless. It's called the bio button, a wearable stick-on device that tracks vital signs 24-7 and uses algorithms to try to detect COVID-19. If you see somebody's temperature starting to creep up and their heart rate and their respiratory rate, uh, that's the hallmark of an infectious process. Some workplaces and schools, including Oakland University and Rochester, Michigan, are already starting to use the bio button with the goal of preventing outbreaks. It might have that capability of, of indicating some kind of infectious process going on in your body before uh, a PCR test can. The devices alert campus health services to students with possible virus symptoms. Originally, the school planned to require use of the devices for dorm residents and athletes but reversed course, making participation optional after a petition garnered nearly 2,500 signatures. The original idea of having it be mandatory for uh, certain students or for all students, um, that was a big ethical concern. Tracking tech, including contact tracing apps, are starting to get widespread use, ushering in new forms of surveillance that some worry could outlast the pandemic. The whole idea of being tracked is, is somewhat uh, disturbing weighing privacy concerns with potential safety benefits in the midst of a second wave of the deadly virus. Liz McLaughlin, NBC News. Well, right? Yeah, it's a chilly morning up here in the mountains. I think those winds blew in some colder air, but uh, we're still looking at some fire danger, so Kevin has a look at that. But the winds have died down significantly yeah, that's definitely than good news. what we were talking about yesterday morning at this time. That is some good news. Yeah, I know that a lot of areas across California, of course, are dealing with uh, high fire danger right now, which is, of course, a lot of concern, especially since we are starting to see some fires break out in Southern California. And a lot of our firefighters are dealing with those massive infernos, especially down south. So we'll get to Kevin's forecast in just a bit. Maddie? Absolutely. And uh, any minute now, we're expecting the November jobs report, and we'll bring that to you in just a few minutes. And we're expecting it to show how many Americans cannot find jobs. President-elect Biden will address that this afternoon while making new promises about how he'll fight COVID-19. And Tracy Potts has more this morning. Hi there, Maddie. Good morning, everyone. We're expecting a dip in the jobs numbers when they come out later this morning. That's due to lockdowns and restrictions around the country from this virus that's now claiming one life every 30 seconds. President-elect Biden outlining how he'll fight coronavirus, vowing to get the vaccine on camera and asking all Americans to mask up. Not forever, 100 days. And I think we'll see a significant reduction if we occur that. <laughs> that occurs. Biden tells CNN he's keeping Dr. Anthony Fauci as a chief medical advisor. Fauci with this warning about Christmas travel. To the extent possible, don't travel, don't congregate together. In Washington, there's growing optimism that Congress will avoid a government shutdown next week and approve COVID relief before the end of the year. We will not leave Washington until we get this done. Compromise is within reach. We know where we agree. We can do this. 
We believe that with good faith negotiations, we could very well come to an agreement. President Trump says he will sign the $908 billion compromise. You'll support it? You'll sign I will. It? I will. Absolutely. That bill includes money for small businesses, health care workers, unemployment, but no stimulus checks. And President Trump avoided a direct question about whether he'd fire Attorney General William Barr. Multiple sources telling NBC he has not ruled that out after Barr declared there was no widespread election fraud. I'm Tracy Potts, 17 News. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Next Star Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.